In this video, we're talking about camera settings and which ones you need to be aware about and know how to use in order to make your videos look better. Hey everyone, Eric here. Welcome to my channel where I make gear demos and instructional videos like this one aimed to help musicians like you. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, check out all the other videos I have here. And if you wanna keep up with me on a daily basis, head on over to Instagram and follow me at Eric Merrow. My goal of this video is to help you get the fundamental knowledge and understanding of these settings that you can take your camera out of auto mode and then start making images and videos that look exactly how you want them to. So in this video, we're going to go over frame rate, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and white balance. And if it all sounds a little bit too daunting to you, don't worry about it. You're gonna see examples of everything and it's gonna be really easy to understand. We'll start with frame rate. Now frame rate is the amount of frames, single images, in your video per second. You'll be choosing one of generally three standard frame rates, 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. Now, frame rate has a direct correlation and impact on other settings that you need to be aware about, but in general, 24 frames per second is considered a little more cinematic because bigger movies use them. It captures a little bit less movement than say 30 frames per second, which is used on TV and broadcast standard. The movement's more fluid. And then 60 frames per second is like a hyper fluid video game style movement. So personally, for all the videos you see here on the channel, I usually shoot in 24 frames per second. My best tip for you is to just try each one and see which one you like the best. And like I said before, frame rate has a direct impact on other tools and settings that you're gonna use to create your exposure or overall brightness level of your image. This is referred to as the exposure triangle, and it's made up of three settings, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. These three settings are what you'll use to determine the brightness level of your image. You don't want an image that's too dark on your subject because you lose information and it's really just difficult to watch. On the opposite side, you don't want an image that's too bright. You might lose a whole bunch of information. So you wanna have control of your exposure in order to set it to where you want the brightness levels. First up in our exposure triangle is the shutter speed. This directly relates to your frame rate because whatever frame rate you choose, the general rule of thumb is that you want to take your shutter speed and multiply your frame rate by two. So let's say we're shooting in 30 frames per second. We want our shutter speed to be 1 60th of a second. If we shoot in 24 frames per second, we want a 1 48th shutter speed. On some cameras, you'll be able to hit that direct 1 48th, but on some cameras, you have to round it up to 1 50th. What the shutter speed does is it sets the amount of time that your camera is exposing each frame, which relates to how much motion blur that your camera captures in each frame. When filming in 24 frames per second, you get more motion blur because your each frame is exposed for a longer period of time. Whereas if you're shooting in 60 frames per second, you're exposing each frame for a shorter amount of time, which gives you a very sharp and again, smooth feel. This is also referred to as having a 180 degree shutter. And like I said, I shoot in 24 frames per second, so generally I have a 1 48th or that 1 50th shutter speed. So next up in our exposure triangle is aperture. Aperture is how wide open a lens is and how much light the lens lets in. So let me, so this is the aperture right here, the opening of the lens. What this determines is how much light hits the sensor back here. You can sort of see my finger. The bigger the opening of the aperture, the lower the number. So right now we're at a 1.4 aperture. So if I stop down, it's called stopping down. As I close the aperture, you can see that the hole gets smaller. And that's doing a couple things. First, it's increasing in number. With a lens wide open like this, you have a shallower depth of field. And depth of field is what's in focus and what's out of focus. Like right now we're shooting in an F4 and right here you can see this out of focus area. The F4 is a moderately wide aperture. So let's see what happens when we close down to say like an F8 or F11. Now you can see that the background right here is more in focus 
And that demonstrates what aperture does. If you want a really out of focus background, you want something with a lower f-stop number, say like a 2.8 or a 1.4 even. As you saw, f4 kind of works, but it doesn't give you as much background blur. Last up in our exposure triangle settings is ISO. ISO is the sensitivity of the camera to light. It's essentially a brightness control, and you actually just witnessed it with that last example. So let's see what exactly ISO is. If I lower the ISO on this frame, you can see that it gets darker. And if I raise the ISO, you can see that it starts getting brighter to bad settings. Now you might think, why even bother lighting stuff if you can just turn the ISO up? Increasing the ISO has a couple different effects on your image. In every camera, as you increase the ISO, you start to increase the noise and that manifests in like weird color renditions. To demonstrate this point, I deliberately set this clip right here ISO to like 40,000, which is too high. You probably see noise in this video clip. It probably looks a little grainy to you. And that's not preferable when shooting video. So what you want to do is aim to keep your ISO as low as possible. So now that we understand the exposure triangle and the settings that go into it, let's talk about white balance. White balance is your camera's interpretation of what color is white, and it depends solely on what you're using to light your scene. The color temperature in white balance is measured on a scale of degrees Kelvin, and this scale determines how blue or yellow your lights are. Oftentimes, the two extremes are measured with daylight, which is 56 to like 5,000 degrees Kelvin. It's a very blue light, and on the other side being tungsten, which is around 3200 degrees Kelvin, and it's a very yellow light. You can set white balance in your camera a few different ways. Oftentimes you'll find presets like daylight or cloudy or indoors. Sometimes it's called incandescent. Those presets allow you to easily tell your camera what kind of lighting conditions you're using. You can also set your degrees Kelvin manually. So let's take, for instance, the lights that are lighting me right here. They are very yellow. They're not tungsten, they're LED, but they sit at around 26 or 2700 degrees Kelvin, meaning they're even more yellow than tungsten, which is generally the preset. What I need to do for this specific setting is go into my white balance and navigate to where it lets me set my white balance manually and set it to that 26 or 2700 degrees Kelvin. White balance really determines how your image and colors look. So right now we're balanced to 2700, like I said, because these lights are very yellow. So let's see what happens when I turn the color balance to something like daylight. So as you can see, it's like I'm in an old Western movie right now. Because I've told the camera that the white balance should be set to 5600 or the daylight preset, meaning these lights come across as incredibly yellow, which is not something that you want. Now that you understand these settings and you understand how to take your camera out of auto and start making videos that look exactly how you want, I would love to see them. So head on over to Instagram, tag me at Eric Merrow and show me the video clips that you create. Before I get out of here, I wanna send a huge thank you to these folks right over here who are my executive producers from my Patreon page. If you wanna learn how to support the channel or become an executive producer yourself, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to my Patreon page. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel check out the other gear demos and instructional videos I have. And if you have a friend who you think might like this video, please share it with them. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.